trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Thursday morning, second to last trading day of 2021. Coming into that, we're talking about record prints across the board almost right now. You're looking at an S&P trading up five points at 47.90. We reach a high two days ago at 47.98. Yesterday's high print up there, you're talking about 47.96. Today's high print already 47.94. NASDAQ 100 up about 13 points. You're talking about about 250 points away from all time highs. Barely in the positive this morning, you have the Dow gonna open right near record territory. We traded to a record yesterday in the Dow. We closed at a record yesterday in the Dow. The Dow, 36,463. We're trading just about 30 points off that price level right now. You're positive by a tenth of percent. Russell positive by barely by less than one point right now. Bitcoin continuing to slide a bit, but getting a little bit of a pop from the lows we had overnight. Bitcoin down to 45,880. We're back to 47,380 flat on the session. Crude, 7669. A little bit of volatility yesterday. How about that volatility? Up to 77 down to 75 we're catching a bit even in the last few minutes since i came on the air at nine o'clock crude up about 50 cents on that bar that began just at 9 a.m this morning to 76 70 we jumped to gold gold some volatility this week up to 1821 yesterday down to 1790 this morning back to 1802 you're negative three dollars technically on the session on gold silver's up 11 cents at 22.97 and we jumped to notes and bonds we got a 10-year yield right now of one 0.53%, 1.527 to be exact. So you're back above 1.5%. You see the action yesterday in terms of trading. It was quite a day yesterday. When you look at from early on Wednesday to where we ended up, you were trading at 130.23. Coming into Wednesday action, you trade down 20 ticks. That is quite a rise in the yield of the 10-year um, as a pretty low volatility day otherwise and nonetheless we're right back at 1.52 i think we came into yesterday 1.47 something like that you jump over to the vix volatility index we had an 18 handle uh, a couple of days ago tuesday to kick things off we were sitting at around 1750 yesterday today we're sitting at 17 uh as we inch towards the final trading day of the year tomorrow our man Dave White, he sent out an update to his subscribers this morning. One of the things he put in there I thought was cool was uh, NYSE Rule 7.2. So I was talking about prior that when January 1st falls on a Saturday, which it does this year, okay, so we get Friday is the 31st, January 1st falling on a Saturday, the market actually gets no holiday. Uh, when it falls on a Sunday, we get Monday off. So on Saturdays, they kind of take a day from us here in the market, as in you usually get a holiday on any other day. Now, here's the exact reason why. Uh, the exchange will not be open for business on New Year's Day, Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, Good Friday, Memorial Day, Juneteenth National Independence Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Thanksgiving Day, and Christmas Day. We get a lot of holidays early on in the year where we get uh, Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, Good Friday, Memorial Day. And then things kind of stretch out towards the end of the year. But what happens is when a holiday observed by the exchange falls on a Saturday, the exchange will not be open for business on the preceding Friday. So normally, right, said the first falls on a Saturday, any other day along that list, uh, that holiday falls on a Saturday, you get the Friday off. And when any holiday falls on Sunday, you get the Monday off. So next year, January 1st is going to fall on a Sunday. We'll get the Monday off. That'll be a nice three-day weekend on um, 
the, the New Year's holiday, the exchange will be open for business on the succeeding Monday unless unusual business conditions exist, such as the ending of a monthly or yearly accounting period. So there's where it goes. Normally, a holiday falls on Saturday. We'll get off Friday. But because it is the end of a month or a year, the market is open Friday, and it does make sense. I always kind of thought maybe it's just because of the yearly, especially. There's a, you have a lot of year-end accounting. There's a lot of tax purposes, right? You you sell that share uh, one minute before the close on December 31st, much different according to taxes, as opposed to if you sell it in the first minute of trading uh, on the 1st of 2022. Nonetheless, so we are open a full day tomorrow. For New Year's Eve, uh, and next year, we get a little bit of a break. Markets, no break indeed. As we are up, we're talking about potentially, folks, the 71st, I think, high of the year. 71st, almost one out of every three trading days for the entire calendar year. We've been setting records in the market. That is quite a statement in and of itself. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. We'll kick things off with the biggest of them all, Apple. Apple shares. You're going to open up about 20 cents this morning. You're up at 179.56. The elusive number of $3 trillion, uh, 182 and change. 182.86, I believe they need for that number. You jump to Microsoft shares. Microsoft up a bit this morning as well, up about 40 cents. We jump over to Google. Google, quite a banner year. You're talking about up almost 70%. 29.36, up about six bucks. We jump to Facebook shares. Facebook up a couple bucks from 342 to 344. I've been talking a lot about them this week. Meta with the Metaverse, the Oculus 2. Uh, it will be interesting to see how that race heats up between Facebook and Apple as Apple looks to uh, launch their own VR headset early next year. Quite be, might be quite a different story, though, with Apple potentially pushing out a VR headset to the tune of thousands of dollars as opposed to Facebook's Meta um, pushing out Oculus Rift uh Oculus Quest, excuse me, at like $400. Nonetheless, Facebook catching a little bit of an acceleration on Monday and Tuesday on some strong holiday sales, sales potentially of their Oculus Rift 2. Giving back some of those gains yesterday or this morning, you're up about two bucks for Facebook shares. We jump over to the retail, Amazon. A little bit of a tough week for Amazon. Volatility on all three days so far. I mean, look at Monday, right? You jet higher, you trade lower. Tuesday, you jet higher, you trade lower. And Wednesday, man, right out of the gate, you trade lower. This morning, you're barely higher by about $2 on Amazon shares at $33.84. Let's jump to Walmart. Walmart shares, $142.71. Why not? I'll jump to this segue. I have a Walmart article up here. Check this one out. Check out this statistic. Walmart drew one in four dollars spent on click and collect that is an amazing amount of money when you think about how we changed in terms of being able to 25.4% of click and collect orders in 2021, the largest share of any U.S. retailer. I mean, that's that's pickup orders. Pickup orders were huge. Click and collect sales are expected to jump by about 21% to $101 billion in 2022. Uh, that translates, when you're talking about Walmart's numbers this year, $20.4 billion in, share, in sales for click and collect orders in 2021. Now, here's what I'll say about this. I was talking to my dad about it recently. The way that they work on this process is going to be very important to their business. When I was thinking about ordering something from Target for a pickup order, I actually in my head was not excited about that experience because they have not streamlined the ability for you to be able to pick up products in an expedited fashion. Uh, I've been there many times to pick it up, and it was a total mess. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how they're going to maybe expedite that process. But Walmart, one in four dollars spent on click and collect. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up seven points right now. NASDAQ up about 20. The Dow up 51. You're right near that record print yesterday of 36,463. Jumping over to some economic news this morning. Weekly jobless claims back under 200,000. That number, 198,000. Uh, less than expected and right around that 52-year low. You're talking about an expectation of about 205, so pretty close. When you're talking about less than 10,000 jobs away from where the market was looking, you're talking about under 200,000. You see the trend. You could say for about the last four to six weeks or so, we've been flirting with this 200,000 mark. We came in at 194. That's uh, six weeks ago now that we we're at 194. So the market just ticking around at just under 200,000. Uh, adjusted for volatility, yeah, four-week moving average under 200,000 right now at 199. Continuing claims, that's a week behind. Dropped 140,000 to 1.72 million, lowest level since March 7th of 2020. There's your continuing claims line. Uh, the trend is your friend there as declining numbers, which is what you want to see on a continuing basis, um, getting people back to work. Okay, back to the Walmart story for a moment, talking about click and collect. So there's a couple of cool statistics here. I talked about that, number one, they're looking for click and collect sales to be on the industry-wide, $101 billion in 2022. They're expected to grow by nearly 20% the following year to $120 billion. When you look at the size of retail e-commerce that click and collect represents, in 2019, about 6% of online orders Okay, we're click and collect. You fast forward to 2022 and you're talking about 10 or 11 percent. You see the numbers in terms of real dollars for click and collect. That's the total sales and share of retail e-commerce sales for items purchased online and picked up in stores. Click and collect, also called buy online, pick up in store. We're all familiar with it for retailers. The option comes with a financial advantage. I mean, man, if these retailers could really perfect this and sometimes it's it's. If they can perfect it, it's actually more convenient for many people and many times, as long as you can pull into that store, grab that item and be on your way. Uh, that's where you see the likes of companies like Chipotle building special delivery lanes just for items purchased online. They understand that the appeal is of ultra importance that you got to be able to have that product picked up with ease. You're not going to order it in line and pick it up in the store. If you have to walk into the store, sit in the customer service aisle, 
and wait for three people and then wait for somebody to take your name, go get your package. This was my experience at Target. Target's usually a great company. It's the holiday season. It's what to expect. But you compare that, okay, with a company like Home Depot and Lowe's, and I'm sure there's horror stories of going to pick up packages during the holidays at those two companies. But what they do have, which you start to see the innovative ways that they're going to change things, is they have those locker systems, right, where you get a code, you go just to the store, there's a wall of lockers, uh, you know which locker is yours, inside of that locker is the package, already there. You don't have to deal with anybody. You show up, you do it, it's there. Uh, at Walmart, I know sometimes they have people that bring it right out to your car. You can schedule a pickup time by the hour if you're able to do that. Uh, it's very important for these companies to master that process because I tell you, it was not a good experience going into Target, doing it once. So what did it make me do? It made me not want to do it again. When in realistically, if they just perfect that process, that's the quickest way for them to make some good margins because that last mile of delivery is a tough one. Now, you get into the actual retailers for the top, click and collect. These are order online, pick up in store retailers in the U.S., ordered by 2021 sales estimates for items ordered online and picked up in stores. You see the acceleration from Walmart here. And it would make sense. Pure numbers. Walmart is just a beast out there. Target with quite an acceleration as well. Best Buy. I mean, look at the plateau, though. Some of the other companies have had, like Home Depot, actually going to see a decrease in 2021 versus 2020. Uh, Best Buy going to see a decrease as well as they really accelerated during the pandemic. More people, I guess, comfortable with walking into a Best Buy, Home Depot, a Lowe's. When you're doing shopping at Walmart and Target, I think we're all becoming a little bit more comfortable with shop online pick up in store. Uh, Macy's, quite an a increase as well. Nordstrom, uh, they should reset that that y-axis there to give us a little context of what these numbers actually are, but pretty marginal numbers nonetheless. Uh, they're a grocery store as well, but click and collect sales have nearly tripled over the past two years for Walmart. Now, I got to give just a little disclosure. We have some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. But anytime you're dealing with these types of raw numbers for a company like Walmart, I mean, one out of four, dollars spent on order online pickup in store that's an area that amazon's going to have a little bit of trouble competing in Listen, i also have some amazon and retirement account amazon's a great company but the one area that they may struggle to compete in is they do not have the retail storefront experience that anybody else has in terms of picking up now that may change amazon may have their whole foods right amazon may be able to form partnerships that their items could be picked up at warehouses maybe it's just picked up at their own warehouse maybe they have a a, a storefront at their warehouse that then turns it to an order online pickup at their warehouse it's, it's potential, but uh, some of those others like Walmart and Target. Now, the one thing is you check out just the pure, and I've talked about this before, the pure value of a company like Walmart is under $400 billion right now. When you think about the numbers that they're doing, the reach they have to the number of Americans, one out of $4 for order online and pick up in the store was spent at Walmart alone. And you're talking about a company valued at $395 billion. Uh, Yes, you always have risk in a company, no matter what the valuation is that you can trade lower, because if it was too easy to trade higher, everybody would be buying it. Uh, but when you're at a level of $395 billion and you're talking about a company like Walmart that has the presence they do, that has the retail reach they do, for longer term investment, $395 billion, I see less risk in a company like that with that value getting destroyed, you tell me that Walmart's gonna go down to two or $300 billion company? I don't see that happening, okay? Versus, you're talking about some of these companies for the growth companies, man, even a company like Amazon, all right, and Amazon's nowhere near $3 trillion like the company Apple is, but even a company like Amazon, when you're talking about a company valued at $1.7 trillion, yeah, you can shave $100 billion off that pretty quickly. You talk about a company like Apple, Apple only needs to trade down $6 to lose $100 billion. $6, right? You take a look at Apple, you put it on a daily, you have swings across the board. Just on December 20th, 10 days ago, Apple was trading at $167. you are talking about $12. You're talking about $180 billion of market cap swings. Percentage-wise, not as big, but point being, a company like Walmart, $395 billion. Now, you're still much bigger than a company like Target. Okay, which is surprising sometimes the valuation of a company like Target, where you're just barely over 100 billion of a company like Target, and you see the numbers. Target, 
They're pushing some big numbers here. You're talking about in 2021, just by click uh, order online, pick up in store, they're approaching $10 billion in sales alone in a market that's going to be growing in 23%, I think they talk about, 20%. Yeah, it's going to grow 21% to $101 billion in 2022, and then it's going to grow 20% to $120 billion for the total market in 2023, with Walmart and Target representing a huge portion of those sales uh, for the retail sector. All right. As we come into the opening bell, we got markets slipping a little bit. S&P's up by four. The tech stocks pulling back a little bit. Back on a five-minute chart to see the action. There's your drop. Just in the last few minutes, we were trading at 16,510. Right now, uh, pretty marginal action, all things considered, as I look at it. Right now, you're negative by six points on the NASDAQ 100. You're positive by 44 on the Dow within about 40 points of record all-time highs yesterday. Just before the close, stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back from the market open. Having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&Ps up by four, NASDAQ 100 down by four, the Dow catching a bid. We're up 70 points in the Dow. You're right near. Did we just get a high print? I think we just might have. 
We sure did. You got a pop on the open there, right coming into the open. 36,475. Dow opens at basically literally a record print on the futures right now. Russell, negative by one. Jumping over to the airlines, man. They are dealing with some some issues on the airlines. More cancellations. We got JetBlue down four, half a percent right now. How about cutting about 1,300 flights from December 30th to January 13th over the next two weeks, expecting more sick calls. Airlines have canceled thousands of flights since Christmas Eve due to bad weather and a wave of COVID-19 among flight crews. I mean, the, the unfortunate part about this is no matter what we do with COVID, folks, if people are getting sick across the board, and yes, maybe this gets us to uh, over the hump as in a state of some form of natural immunity as this thing rips through basically the whole population is how it looks is that when you look at it for the market for the economy there will be disruptions just like when there's a flu season you know you got the flu i don't want people coming to the office with the flu right no before covid if people were sick and i had employees tfnn employees they say ah, I'm, I'm not feeling well but i can make it in i'd say no way man i don't want the whole office to be sick right you're sick you stay home you get better you come into the office uh you can't go to work sick no matter what so the airlines dealing with some tough woes here now asymptomatic cases get into a little bit of complex situation here as things evolve but nonetheless these airlines they are dealing with some woes and you got jet blue trading uh down about half a percent let's jump over to southwest not quite as bad. Southwest is flat. All the airlines kind of really American, catching a little bit of a bid after trading lower decently yesterday. Delta Airlines, yeah, I was going to say probably similar. Delta getting a little bit of a pop after trading low yesterday as well. Okay, what else we got pulled up here? Buybacks. Let's talk about this one. Whew. How about poise for a record year? These numbers, man. What happened to capital capital investment in, in corporations, folks. That's that's uh, the, the real thing of all these companies. I mean, it must be, it, it's quite a nice world where you get to have the lobbyists these companies get to have. I mean, the amount of money that gets spent on lobbying by corporate America, uh, and it's all spun in a fashion, right? That every dollar is created for capital investment, which grows jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Well, folks, coming up this year alone, you're talking about $850 billion dollars 850 billion dollars buybacks for 2021 after cratering in the first half of 2020 during the pandemic buybacks have increased six quarters in a row and are poised for a record record breaking year uh total buyback volume for 2021 going to be a record and exceed the record of 806 billion in 2018 you look at some of the biggest buybacks out there you got uh, Apple, 20 billion, Meta, 15, Google, 12 billion, Bank of America, the banks, they had to hold that capital for a period of time. Then they got to release it. Bank of America, 10 billion, Oracle, 9 billion, uh, almost a trillion dollars in one year alone, just taken from corporate America and given to shareholders. They are the owners, folks. OK, but keep that in mind when you hear that, you know, every dollar is necessary to grow the company. They're taking almost a trillion dollars right out and basically giving it a dividend. A buyback is a dividend. It's the same exact thing, okay? It's a dividend in a different form. Um, and then you're talking about almost a trillion dollars, which is perfect for corporate America, except for when corporate America wants the handouts and except for when, when corporate America says that every dollar uh, that a company earns above their bottom line that we have right now is a company is, is a dollar that gets invested, right? In the employees and growth and uh, capital expenses, et cetera. It's just not how it plays out, folks. It's just not how it plays out recently on a quarterly basis. Some pretty stunning numbers there. 178 billion, 199, 236, and the estimate for this quarter we're in right now, 238. Quite the number indeed. Um, and do they benefit the investor? Yeah, they certainly do on most cases. Uh, not sure they benefit the economy overall as much as well. All right, what else we got going on there? Taking a look at uh, AI. It's always interesting wrapping up the end of the year. There's a bunch of cool articles that talk about uh, things going on in the year. The AI-powered stock fund bails out of mega cap FANG stocks. So this is an artificial intelligence guided fund that's been lagging the market. And uh, so right recently it's jettisoned its mega tech, mega cap, mega cap tech names in a bid to write the ship. So this is an AI powered equity exchange traded fund and it sold down its so-called FANG position this month, leaving just Apple in its top 20 holdings. Now this thing has underperformed the market, but it's going to be cool as we look at this um, because I imagine this is where part of the industry is at least going, right? Trying to have computers how to figure out the best way 
to potentially manage returns, beat the market, etc. So you have this AI system continuing to lighten up on its big tech exposure with none in its top 10 positions. Excuse me. Uh, that is the co-founder of uh, Data Trek Research. Uh, the only overlapping theme in their top 10 positions, all right, this is the AI system, is cybersecurity, with the rest spanning everything from cloud computing, commercial real estate, medical devices, and the semiconductor industry. Um, let's see. So... The shift in positioning suggests the AI fund's quote-unquote manager, which is a quantitative model which runs 24-7 in IBM, on IBM Corp's Watson platform, okay? And yeah, it would mean that this AI fund that's running on Watson is not buying into the narrative that the tech giants can lead the market higher as they trade out of them. Uh, chip maker AMD and Security solutions provider Palo Alto Networks are the fund's top positions, uh, but here's the key. So this was started with, excuse me, the quantitative model behind the $170 million fund assesses more than 6,000 publicly traded companies each day. It, of course, scraps everything you have out there, regulatory filings, news, st news stories, management profiles. This can see a lot more than we could see in one human brain. And nonetheless, though, okay, it is underperforming. It was launched in October of 2017. Uh, delivered total returns, total though, since 2017 of 66%. That would be staggering in any other world, except for the fact in our world, you got 102% since 2017 in the S&P 500 total return index. Uh, so underperforming. Nonetheless, uh, AI should be an ever-evolving science that is always getting a little bit brighter. And uh, I imagine eventually, as long as the people who are controlling that, because inputs do matter, that those computers will catch up to some degree. I mean, there's got to be some system if you've got all the info in front of you and you can actually remember it all. There's got to be some type of system where those computers figure out whether it's some type of system, whether, you know, that's how AI works, right? I can't map it up my own brain, but once they get all the data in front of them, there should be a system where that computer picks up something going on of how good companies to get ahead of the run higher, et cetera, but it hasn't done it yet. It's been running for four years on that system on Watson. All right, jumping back to the market. We're in positive territory across the board. Why not? There's an all-time high print for you. Come on. We're going to stop at 4799. Why not 4800 in the S&Ps? You're talking about the Dow just blows away 36,500. Look at this market. No, nothing getting in the way of this. Uh, Nasdaq is flat and you got the Russell up 16 points, man. Whew. Bitcoin 47,000. Let's see. We got crude trading up to $77 right now. We got gold trading up as well to 1807. Everything's trading higher, folks. Even notes and bonds. A uh, little bit of a pullback, actually, as we get a little bit of higher yield. We're talking about 1.454% now. 1.54% the yield on the 10 year. And we jump over to the VIX, sitting right at a simple, even number of 17. We got record prints across the board, folks. S&Ps, right? Is that a record print? It sure is. Record print, 47.99. S&Ps, Dow's. Can the NASDAQ get here? We got about 260 points for that one. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get market giving back some of those gains right now. A little bit of volatility to kick things off, right? Checking out the NASDAQ 100 on a five-minute basis. There's some volatility for you. Uh, 925, we're down to 16,480. We open and make it all the way up to 16,520. We've given up about 60 points from that price level. You get the S&Ps trading 10 points off the highs right now to 47.89. The Dow holding up relatively well, though. You're above 36,500. That's the first time we've ever had Dow above 36,500 on this morning show as we tick just under that level right now jumping around to other headlines i had up here talking about crypto so ethereum beats bitcoin in 2021 yeah as volatility takes a bite both of them having pretty banner years uh biggest cryptocurrency has macro correlation with risk assets yeah i would say so they are trading pretty um correlated to everything else going on right now but you take a look at the the years that they have had ether outshining bitcoin when you look at ethereum versus uh Bitcoin, yes, and there's where the year that you're talking about, it was way under where it was. And you can see uh, the resurgence it had from 19 to 20 to 2021, even in light of what Bitcoin had. Now, man, you're in any type of crypto to, to kick off 2021, and, and I hope you're doing well because the years that these had, you started 2021 out at 27,000 on Bitcoin. Is that right? Yeah, well, that is correct. You started... 2021 at about 27,000. You come into the end of the year at 47,000. You started the year for Ethereum at, now this goes back to February 8th. Maybe that's when Ethereum futures started trading, but nonetheless, 1,600 back at that time up to 3,700. All right. You want to talk about uh, dollars. How about $13 billion of them for one ship for our Navy? Uh, the Navy's costly carrier finally has all its bomb lifting elevators. Only in the world of defense spending and government spending could this uh, make sense. None of the 11 elevators were installed on this carrier on delivery in May of 2017, more than four years ago. Now that they have the elevators for the bombs, operational patrols can now deploy four and a half years late. Uh, this ship, 13.3, the USS Gerald R. Ford, 13.3 billion, billion dollars, 13.3, almost couldn't get it out of my mouth there. Uh, the service has announced that the 11th and final advanced weapons elevator is in place. They must be some special elevators to be bumping around the type of bombs that they're carrying, I'm sure. Significant milestone is how a rear admiral puts it in the Navy's program, executive officer for aircraft carriers. The Navy took delivery 
of the first in the Ford class of carriers in May of 2017, um, saying it was expected to be operational in 2020. We're now, of course, in the final two days of 2021. The service did not disclose that at that time, none of the 11 elevators were operational, much less installed until Bloomberg News reported the problem in November 2018. Um, $13.3 billion. Uh, the delay to fix the elevators and resolve other issues has lengthened a period during which the Navy is attempting to maintain policymaker desired levels of carrier forward deployments with its 10 other carriers. So a little bit of a stress there, but you take a look at it, quite a ship. $13.3 billion. I started looking up um, defense spending. <laughs> Defense expenditures for NATO countries, 2021, there's the U.S. at $811 billion. $13.3 billion is the number for this ship alone. You don't have to go far down the list to get a yearly expenditure for the companies, uh, companies, countries like Spain, spending $14 billion all year. That would just be that one ship alone. Uh, obviously, defense spending, unfortunately, gets a little bit political. But, man, when you talk about expenditures, $13.3 billion to take delivery of a ship in May of 2017 and four and a half years later, things finally working. Uh, nonetheless, you see the type of uh, money that is spent in that defense sector. Pretty mind-blowing uh, the way that those stories continue to go. All right, what else do we have pulled up here? Let's talk about, uh, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we have the NASDAQ 100 in negative territory. Only index in the negative right now. We'll jump to the biggest dog out there, Apple shares. Yeah, dipping a little bit lower on the open uh, from 179.70 to 179.32. Let's jump to AMD. This thing, quite a rocket ship last week. We're at 140 up to 156, just like that. We're at 146. Maybe we give it all back to 140, putting this thing on a daily. Man, you talk about an acceleration. Now, 130 would be the area that we were just trading in December 14th, potentially, for AMD. Quite a run from 72 bucks back in May. We jump over to Intel. Quite a different looking chart. Intel trading at 52. A little bit of volatility here in spades uh, for Intel shares. We jump around to some of the other FANG stocks to see how they're trading. Google shares down about a quarter percent right now. We jump over to Facebook shares up about four tenths percent. Some of the stocks I like to take a look at. Disney continuing to pop off of that double low kind of it made back here in early December, middle of the month, December 20th. You're trading a low 145. We're up another eight tenths percent for Disney at 156. And the world has a long way to go to get back to a little bit of a normalcy for Disney. I mean, yeah, we're we're close to that level, folks, but we're no near, nowhere near where Disney needs society to be for their parks to be just completely over full on a weekly basis. And yes, you're going to be over full when you open back up. But I'm talking about a sustained uh, opening where everybody is attending the parks without thinking about the virus at all. That's probably six, 12 months out into the future, hopefully. Uh, but movie theaters as well. As somebody in Florida, cases are spiking right now. I have two kids who are unvaccinated under the age of five at home right now. Just not quite comfortable going to a movie in the theaters just yet. Uh, outside of the kids being unvaccinated, you know, people getting back to life. It's a beautiful thing. You're out there, you're vaccinated, you're boosted. But when you got kids in the house, they're unvaccinated. It weighs on it. It's weighing on the economic decisions. And you can see it's weighing on companies like Disney. Now, Uber, uh, pulling back from some of the highs. This thing's been quite an underperformer this year. You kick off 2020 at a price point about 52. We come into the end of the year at 42, uh, up from 35. But man, they've paid a price as the world economy taking a little bit longer to get back to normalcy, the one thing I will say is that you are basically where you came into COVID at, at a price of 41. The ride sharing business changed forever with business travel, not quite what it used to be and probably not what it will be ever again. But the food delivery business also changing forever and ingrained in society forever and probably changing the way that we think about food, uh, delivery of food and our eating habits forever in Uber at the forefront of that, uh, with DoorDash, a big one as well. Now you jump over to DoorDash, look at the pullback they've had recently from 257 to 152, and we take a look at Lyft, a little bit of a different story with Lyft, but still under where you were in 2020. Now, interesting that Lyft, they don't have that food exposure that Uber has. They haven't seen the benefit Uber has. The one benefit they do have is that they're not global. A lot of their focus is North America, which has seen a, quicker comeback from COVID. Europe dealing with a lot of woes over there. When you got Uber with so much, so much exposure internationally, that's going to weigh on them a bit. But you can see what it's weighing on Lyft, that they have none of the growth of the food delivery business that Uber has. Today, though, up about 1.8%. I like Air Airbnb. Uh, strong company as well. like taking a look at them. If I was looking to 
Maybe get some exposure to a rebound in travel. This might be a good play. Airbnb, you take a look at the 15 minute, you're up about three quarters percent today, back on a daily basis. And yeah, you're getting in, um, I mean, quite a pullback. You were trading at 130 back in July, up to 213 as recently as about a month ago, six weeks ago, just trading at 168 for Airbnb. Stay tuned, folks. We get the S&Ps up three points just off all-time highs. Dow sitting above 36,500 right now. We'll be right back. We got one more show tomorrow before the end of the year. Stay tuned, folks. I got one more segment in the program. I'll be right back in three minutes to wrap things up. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got all the markets back in the positive right now with the S&Ps up seven points at 47.91. We got an all-time high print today of 47.99. Do we make it to 4,800 in the futures? We will find out. NASDAQ 100 flat right now. Only index barely in the red. The Dow giving it back a little bit, back under 35,000. We've traded 100 points now in the Dow off of the highs with a quick turnaround. We were up at 935. So in the last about 20 minutes or so, the Dow trading 100 points off the highs right now. The Russell, though, look at that acceleration. 
Russell catching a bid up 20 points. You're up almost a full percent from where we were on the open in the Russell right now. We jump to commodities. Gold trading at 1805, backing off a bit. Notes and bonds right now backing off as well. We're talking about a yield in that 10-year, 1.54. Four, 1.54, we'll call it, 1.54%. The yield on the 10-year, we jump over to the VIX. Sitting right at about 17 with one trading day left in the year. Not much can derail this market, I imagine, at this point, folks. It's not like a sell-off is going to come out of nowhere with the type of strength we've had this week. I mean, look at a weekly basis, right? For all the fear we've had in this market, when you think about the number of times people have said, and we've probably thought, you've at least examined in your own mind, is this it? Is this a sell-off? Are we trading lower? Are we going to have a real pullback here? Boy, you look at this weekly chart, you can't even find a pullback on this. You cannot even find a pullback. Now, the run has been so substantial, okay, from 2,500 to almost 5,000, 47.99 to be exact today, that these pullbacks don't register, even though they've been pretty substantial in their own right. When you look, 35.87 down to 31.98. You're talking about 250 S&P points in that pullback last September. Uh, we look at, let's find another one, the pullback that we had in August. Okay, we have a high of 45.49. You trade down to 4260, almost 300 S&P points. But man, in context of where we've been, folks, context is very, very important. 2,500 to 4,800, we come into the end of the year, but nothing but strength. We got markets in positive territory, and we got one more trading day left. I'll be back tomorrow morning, December 31st, New Year's Eve, to kick off my uh, New Year's Eve at 9 o'clock in the morning. Live programming all day, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next with Tiger Technician's Hour. Fast Market at 12. Steve Rhodes is live at 1 o'clock today. Tom O'Brien, my dad, wraps things up live from 3 till 4. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great Thursday. Thank you, Basil.